Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode 101. We have been doing this a long time. <laughs> anyway, my guest today is Claudia Daniels, and she is going to talk to us about how to get recognized. But first, I got to do my little commercial. This is live on Facebook at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, on our Facebook page, so facebook.com slash understand photography. But if you can't watch us live, we also upload it to YouTube and to um, SoundCloud so that it goes off as a podcast to iTunes and Stitcher, whatever you listen to. And that we do on Saturday. So if you miss Friday, you can watch the same show on Saturday. Now, in our show notes, in all of our show notes, we have a link to a, very, a, a webinar called how to get a solid photography education in just four weeks. Now, I think some of you who watch the show all the time, you know that all of our online classes are on sale through August 31st, so it's coming up. The end is near. So if you're interested in any of our online classes, the sale is going to end on August 31st. So remember, once you buy one of our online classes, you own it for life. And there's some really good ones in there. However, our signature course is the four weeks to proficiency in photography. So this webinar that I'm talking about, the four weeks, how to get a solid photography education in just four weeks, that's um, basically going to show you uh, what you need to learn in photography. And you're going to learn a little bit about my teaching style, which of course our motto is we simplify the technical. So if you like the teaching style and the class sounds like something that you'd like to take, get it now because up until August 31st it's $197 it's gonna go up to 297 September 1st now it is a live class so it doesn't start until September 19th but buy it before September 19th because you're gonna save a lot of money <laughs> anyway we also have a few trips so um, we have a new website it's not it's maybe five six weeks old now so it's so nice it works I've had so I had so many problems with that other website so it's so nice to have a good working website. Thanks, Anna. And um, go to understandphotography.com and you can click on our trips to see what we've got coming up. Our ladies only to Mount Dora is the first one in December. That's going to be awesome because of Christmas lights and all kinds of stuff. And then Everglades in January. Ladies only Cuba in February. Um, I can't remember, we're going to St. Joe's, taking a, everybody to St. Augustine, and again to the Forgotten Coast. So check that out at understandphotography.com. So I want to introduce my guest today, Claudia Daniels. And Claudia is a nature photographer located in Venice, Florida. Welcome. Thank you. And now you actually started off as a graphic designer, am I right? Yes, yes I did. I um, have a degree in graphic design and I also taught graphic design at the State College of Florida. Oh. Yeah, for a number of years. Where's the State College of Florida? The State College of Florida has um, a campus in Bradenton and in Venice. Okay, because that's not Florida State. No. That's something different. Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah and uh, it, was, it was fun to teach. I yeah. enjoyed it. And so how did you, like, how did you tr make the, the leap into photography? Photography was always part of graphic design. Okay. So we, uh, we worked a lot with different images and I encouraged my students to take their own images to work with rather than going to a stock site or using somebody else's images off the internet. And um, that's how photography started. So what happened? Did you just start going out and taking pictures? Yeah, or? I started to go out, take pictures, took my students with me, took a couple photography classes myself. Um, I did that years ago also in the dark room. Oh, yeah. Which was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed that. And then the digital uh, photography. And I taught uh, Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator. So all that can be used for photography as well. Okay. So, and now you are more of a photo artist, would you call yourself? Yes, or? definitely. Because that's where the graphic design background comes in. Because we manipulated quite a lot of images to use for, you know, menus and advertising and so I'm still doing that quite a bit, okay. like having the artist, artistic frame of mind. And yet, and then, but your nature photography, you sell it as fine art. Yes, sometimes um, I change pictures to look more artistic and sometimes I don't. Sometimes they come pretty much straight out of the camera. It just depends on the image and who wants to buy what. And probably your mood when you're looking at it, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's fun to do, no matter what. Because I know I sometimes it. I see, I have a picture and I, you know, I edit it and it looks fine. And then, like, two years later, I'll look at it and I think, 
oh, that would look good if I would bring out the shadows. Yeah, or, you know, or black and white. Or, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's fun to do that, you know, and I oftentimes do that with older pictures to get, just to give it a new look. Yeah, yes. well, and you probably know a lot because you know Photoshop inside and out. Yeah. Okay, so you have a lot of different subjects on your website. Yes. So do you have like a favorite? I think my favorite thing to shoot is nature, mostly birds, because it's unpredictable and it's challenging. And I like to be out in nature. I love the quiet feel that it has early in the morning. You just like to you be get there. up before, while yeah, it's still dark really, and really get out early there. when the sun goes up. It's just nice and quiet and now that's why I like you, it. Now let me ask you, do you go by yourself or do you have... You always meet people. Sometimes you go together as a group or with one person or when you get there, there are always other photographers there. And if not, it's fine too. I mean, it's mostly safe locations, so it's okay. Do you mostly go to Venice Rookery or do you go all over the um, place? It depends on the time of year. So okay. I go often to the Rookery because it's very close to where I live, but oftentimes I also go to uh, Mayaka River State Park, which okay. is nice, um, or come down to um, Estero sometimes. It oh. just depends. Sanibel is a nice locale. It okay. just depends just on the depends. season and the time of year. Okay. So, all right, so now you take all these beautiful pictures. How did you get into selling them as artwork? What happened was, um, first I just took pictures just for the enjoyment, and then people always ask me, where can I buy your pictures? And I'm like, well, they're not really for sale. And then people said, what? But I would really like to have one framed, and could you send one to me, and, and could you make it available? And that's how I started to um, sell my pictures. And um, I sell them mostly on my website or Fine Art America. That's another site that I use um, in local art galleries in shops in the area. People can buy pictures as postcards if they like. Okay. So there are different venues and possibilities. Okay, so it just, people just started asking you? So you yeah, said, okay. Yeah, they just started asking and I'm then. I'm gonna come up with a price list. I'm absolutely. gonna start. And first, did you just start on your own website or did you? First, what I started uh, was m m mainly on Facebook just to share pictures and then people ask, where can I buy this? And then I had it printed on my own and I sent it to people and that became too cumbersome. And then I thought I have to look for a venue where people can just order it and order the size and it will be sent to them directly. It will be much quicker and okay. easier for them and for me. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. Now you have been in a lot of magazines and publications in general. If somebody wanted to, you know, that kind of recognition, how, how do you get the attention of the magazine? I think um, it's best to find a local magazine and start shooting for this magazine, which I did. What do you mean by that? Um, I, I was approached by a local Venice mag magazine to shoot for their magazine to be published. And I did that, and it was a real good learning experience. Okay, when you, wait, 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 let's, let's back up, because I want, that's what happened to you, but I want this, I want people to know, like, how can they do it? When you say shoot for them, shoot what? Shoot whatever they would ask you to do. For example, I shot uh, for a number of years for Venice Golf Course Living Magazine, mm -hmm. and they sent me to restaurants to take food pictures, to events, okay. to local stores. And did they pay you for that? Yes, or? yeah, they did pay me for that. And it was an interesting learning experience because usually I would not take pictures of food professionally or of events and so I was forced to do that and I learned quite a bit. Yeah. I learned how to use the flash, mm -hmm. um, how to work with different lighting situations and so I would recommend that to people. It's Just um, look for a local magazine and, and ask, do you need any help? You know, can I, can I volunteer or can I work with you? Are you paying me? or you're not paying me, even if, if it's not a paid job, it's a great experience. See, now my advice, because I have that same advice al almost exactly, but my advice is to barter for ads. Yes. Shouldn't do it for free. Absolutely, that's a good Because that's, that's you yeah. know, that just drags us all down when too many photographers that's are true, working for too. free. Yeah. But if you're bartering for an advertisement, yeah, great. you know, one of the, my jobs is for Florida Weekly newspaper, and I barter for ads, and I get some great responses oh, from absolutely. that newspaper. Yeah, that's a great idea. So, yeah. Yeah, but it's the same thing. I do event photography for them. Yes. But we have a guy, a local guy here, who is a, a wildlife photographer, and he did the same thing, only he just did 
you know, he was just like kind of picking and choosing what he would only like work with the like the conservancy and the rookery bay okay. and the nature type of thing. So he wouldn't go out to the fancy gala for, you know, Catholic charities or Jewish Federation or something. He because right. he wanted to stay in his yeah, which sure. was brilliant on his yeah, part. Because sure. he doesn't do it anymore because he did establish himself as an he doesn't want he didn't want to be known as an event photographer right. because that's not his thing. Yeah, that's true. But now how does that help you get your pictures in there as far as getting published as far as your work? I mean, you know, I got thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures in, in newspapers that are of, you know, let me get your picture, click, let me get your picture, click, you know what I'm saying? That's not going to, that's not going to help me sell my art. No, but once people get to know you and they get to know your name and you can say, well, I, I don't mind shooting an event, but what I really like to do is shoot wildlife. Here's one of my wildlife images. Would you be able to publish it? Okay. It's a way in the door. Ah, so you get to know the staff. Yeah, you get to know the staff, you get uh, to know the editor, and they, okay. they get to know you and know what you really like to do and what you like to shoot. So you got to be a little assertive but not aggressive, it Absolutely, like. yeah. And I think you got to give a little bit and then you get that way. Okay. Yeah, plus if you shoot anything, you become a better photographer. You know, it pushes you, even if you shoot things that you are not so familiar with or you don't like as much, but it really pushes you to, to become, improve. you know, yeah, to improve I your skills. I totally agree with that. Yeah. When I first, uh, you know, I have all this training, you know, first I started with weddings and then got into portraiture more, and I have so much training with lighting and posing, yes. and then when I started teaching and all these nature photographers came into, this is back in 2009, Holy moly, nature photography is completely different. Oh, yes, <laughs> Just it is. Just like you yeah. had to learn the lighting. Absolutely, yeah. I had to learn, yeah. you know, extension tubes yeah. and macro lenses. Oh, and yeah. Ah, but the more you know, the better metering it is. Metering modes. Yeah. That's In portraiture, you have one mode. You don't change your right, modes. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? No, so, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it was really a good experience for me. Same thing. Yeah. So, um, so now, all right. So now you're getting the local magazines right they're yes. starting to know who you are yes so what else what what no wait a minute let me let me back up so you said you worked for venice what what was gulf the first coast one? living gulf coast living yeah. so did you were you able to get them to publish any of your own artwork or were you just doing their events yes i did yeah they published some of my artwork so what did they publish did you have to write a story to go with it um yes one time i wrote a story and um, you know, I have I'm a volunteer for literacy volunteers, and it's really important to me. So the I wrote the story, I took the pictures, and they published it, which is really important for me. Okay. And so there's one way. You know, Artie Morris did the same thing. Did he? Forty okay. years ago. Yeah. That's what he he. It's in, if you watch our very first show, the Understand Photography Show, episode number one with Artie Morris. Okay. He talks about. Um, and I just watched it because he was on last week, so I watched the one before just to refresh it. And uh, but he talks about that he kept submitting his pictures to like you know Nature Photography magazine, yeah. and you know they just ignored him. But then he wrote a story. Yes. And with his pictures, and got three or four of his pictures because he wrote the story. Absolutely, yeah, that helps. So if you're not Definitely a good helps. writer, though. Yeah, if you're not a good writer, you may find a good writer friend. Yeah, you know, or you could write another, this. You could write yeah. the shell and have absolutely, your friend and then it have people or, fill in. Sure, that's awesome. You know, <laughs> always a way. So what? Um, so okay. So also, what's what are some other ways that we can get recognized? Um, other ways I think are um, to submit pay, pay, uh, pictures to local newspapers. They always are looking. Like what kind of pictures? Anything that is happening. Let's just say. But how um, does that help you sell your artwork? I think it gets you recognized and they know you, they get to know you, and they see you're a good photographer and your work is good, your okay. pictures are sharp, you know what you're doing. And one thing leads to another and they may ask you then to become a stringer or to work in a certain department for the newspaper. So you just have to get your foot in the door. I think that's really important. Okay. Just to submit and just to ask, do you need pictures of this and that and I can supply them. Okay. And then you said you also enter in a lot of competitions, or you did? Yes. Or? Yeah, I enter in a lot of competitions. I still do. I try to find competitions um, where you do not have to pay a lot of money up front. You know, sometimes there is a fee, an entrance fee, but it varies. 
So if you're a beginning photographer, you have to really make good choices where to enter mm -hmm. and how much money are you willing to pay to enter. And so there are a lot of free competitions. And how would they find these competitions? If you look online and you just look in your area, um, depending on what you like to shoot, let's say you like to shoot wildlife, you can just enter a search term in Google, um, wildlife competition in Sarasota or in okay. Naples. And there's a, a, a list of, of availabilities, you know, of possibilities that will come up. Okay. Um, newspapers oftentimes have competition, like we have a newspaper called The Observer, they have a competition several times a year. Okay. So that's good to enter. Okay. They have a prize. And um, the same with the camera club. If you belong to a camera club, they have competitions. And then they have the nationwide camera clubs, the Florida wide camera clubs. So anything like that. So, but winning these, how does that get you any recognition? I mean, if you're winning a local camera club, aren't you just being recognized within, with, among other photographers? How does that help you? Not really, because oftentimes um, those winning entries are published throughout Facebook, let's just say, or Instagram. Ah. So a lot of other people see it. Okay. And they recognize that if you are a prize winner, it means something. Yeah. Okay. There's so many entries, so it really feels good Especially if, you if you're win winning a ribbon or statewide or yeah, absolutely or internationally, yeah. nationally. That's yeah. one okay. thing leads just to another. That's really important to notice. Okay. Well, all right. What else? So we're so so far we're gonna get a part-time <laughs> freelance gig yes. with a newspaper or magazine. Yep. And we're going to, or even just submit pictures. Yes, submit pictures. Even if they're not artistic pictures, they're just like. Like for, you know, my mother, okay, I do a lot of event photography, paid and for the newspaper, but my mother has a charity. Okay. And I always submit her pictures yes, to the paper. absolutely. Maybe with a little story yep. or something Volunteer like that. Volunteer for your favorite so that charity. that kind of stuff, that would be yeah. really helpful. Yeah. Um, and then also, what else? We've got... For example, um, there are quite a few charities that have auctions. Uh -huh. So you could submit a picture to an auction. A lot of people will see it. You know, and it goes to the highest bidder, and you do something good for whatever charity you choose. That's one option. Now, I, actually, I, I am going to write a blog post about that because that is such a good option, but it's such a dangerous au option, too, because it's expensive. Because for you to donate a picture that anybody would bid on, it has to be kind of big. Yeah. Like that's a true. minimum of yeah. maybe 20 by 24, yeah. which is going to cost you, yeah. you know, 80 bucks or at least probably. That's true. Probably even more. Yeah, it's not a cheap alternative. So that's, it is good, but yeah. you have to do it right. Yeah, you have to so do it right. Absolutely. Stay tuned because I am writing a blog article okay. about that. It's on my list. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. Um, uh. Then submit to your local art center. You know, art centers always have competitions, and most of them have a photography um, component. So you may as well do that because you can sell your picture at the same time. I am, a, and we've talked about this a little before the show, but I am a huge proponent of joining your local art association. Absolutely, yeah. Not just joining, but getting involved. Yes. Because who goes to art? I mean, of course, you're going to mostly see other artists. Yes. But art patrons go to the art association. Oh, absolutely, and members of the public. And those are no. the people who buy the art, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, absolutely. I sold quite a few pictures on art shows and, and in art And if you're, if you're involved, right? I mean, there ha are opportunities. I don't know. what Does Venice have an art association? Yes, or, or, they do. Okay. Yeah. Venice, Englewood, we have several ones. Okay. Sarasota. So it doesn't just have to be one. It could be several. But you can have your own show? You can have your own show. But you can you ask for how that. How do you get that? If you're, like, say you belong to the Venice Art Association, you want your own show. Yeah, how, it's, can it's you, not you easy. Can you just ask? Or? Yes, you can apply for it. Uh -huh. And uh, because they have so many artists that apply, so it's a lottery, and they pick and choose when people can do it, okay. and they ask you. And I'm sure they would like to have a variety of fine art, you know, photography and watercolors, so they will pick and choose. And but if but you, you can do get that opportunity, absolutely. then yeah. what? Yeah, then you, you can promote it by yeah. putting out press releases. Yeah. Or get you together with, with a couple other photographers, three or four photographers. Um, rather than doing it alone, because oftentimes there's a price attached to that. Mm. And so if you can share the cost with others and submit the art, and so everybody just has to print, let's say, four or five pictures, and that saves some cost. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. 
and then you could pub you can help publicize that by absolutely by yeah. sending. Do you send out press releases or? Yes, I have in the past, and they do too. The okay. art centers do on your behalf. Which you hope they'll do, but you also have to take the initiative oh, to sure. do your own, yes, right? Oh, sure. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You yeah. have to be your, your own advocate. And these art centers, at least ours, we have some you know, local competitions in the, a regular art center, but we also have um, Camera USA, which is this national huge oh, yeah. one with $5,000 prize. Yeah, that's and great. You know, that kind of stuff. So Absolutely. that's just our, the first couple of years that they did Camera USA, it was all Naples people winning it. Yeah. But as it got bigger, you know, now oh, people yeah. from all over are yeah. winning it because it's a big national competition. Yeah, they grow and yeah. So it's, it's a great place to get recognized. Absolutely. Join your art <laughs> association and like you have more than one in your area, yes, it sounds yeah, we like. Yes, several that we can Jeez. pick and choose. Yeah. So what about other, like, are there other art venues that you need to... What I think is important, look locally, look around, look at your local coffee shop. Um, can you uh, put some of your artwork in there, talk to people and say, hey, if I give you five of my pictures, would you display them? Would you put a price on there? Uh, what about little shops that sell cards or gifts? Can you print up some cards and can you give it to them and say, hey, we can work something out, you know, where I can have my art displayed here and you sell it for me. Yeah. That oftentimes works. Um, no, we, have a, we have a, a theater in, in Venice, uh -huh. and um, oftentimes local artists exhibit their work right there at the theater, which is great oh. because during intermission, people need something to do. They walk around, they see it, and they do that up in Fort Myers at the Broadway Palm too. Yeah. I just remembered; I forgot all about that. Yeah, so that's a ah. good, you know, good venue to do it. Just anywhere locally, and, but just look you around. You find out mostly because you're involved in the art community. Is that how you find out? Yeah, about Yeah, and keep of this an stuff? open mind and think about it. You know, if you go somewhere and you see artwork and and you see other people's artwork like when I go to the um, the airport here yes. in Fort Myers yeah you see a lot of local artists work yeah. displayed right there yep you know so that's a great yep. we had Mila Bridger was on our show she yeah. just took hers down they they ha she had a piece up there for a year yeah is what they do yeah. I guess and Sarasota too yeah Sarasota Airport so that's one way you know anything where you see artwork displayed and just Call, just ask. Just call up yeah. the airport and say, and "Hey, I see say, there's. Hey, how do I yeah. do? How do I get in? Could I? Yeah. Would you be interested? Let me but give you an you example. But you have to promote it. Absolutely. Because yeah. you know what? So what if your your uh, picture is hanging up in the theater? Yes. So what? People who are at the theater are going to look at it unless they really love it. They're not even going to look at your name. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. Have so to, yeah. how can you capitalize on that? On social media? Is that what you do? On social media, promote it, um, have a good price attached to your picture. What do you mean by have, a good price? Don't have it, have, an, have it overpriced. You know, you have to re do the research and see what would the local community pay for my picture. Uh -huh. You don't want to give it away, but you don't want to make it so pricey that no one will buy it. Okay. So you have to do a lot of research and see what's, what's possible for people. You know, mm -hmm. what works, what doesn't work. Okay. So let's talk about social media a little bit. Yeah, social media I think is super important because um, I'm from Germany. You probably have noticed because of my accent. <laughs> but to, com to connect with people not just in the U.S. but outside of the U.S., um, social media is key. It's, it's super important. For example, I, put, um, I have a Flickr account and I have quite a few pictures on there. And I had somebody contact me from um, the Russian edition from Popular Mechanics. And they liked one of my pictures from the swamp buggy races here in Naples. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And um, they published it. And I would have never, you know, gotten that if I didn't put it on Flickr, which is like a worldwide thing. I have a story about David Akubian, who I'm going to get on this show eventually. He lives um, in North Georgia somewhere, so it's hard to get him on the yeah. show since you have to be here in Naples to do this show. But... Um, I'm a nosy person. You probably noticed that. <laughs> so I, I w we were both speaking at a conference, and I had some time with him alone. I'm like, well, so how do you make your money? Because I'm nosy, and I'm not shy to ask people personal questions. My mother's always going, oh, my God, why do you ask <laughs> these questions? But I think he said half of his income comes from one company who found his images on Flickr. Yeah. They were looking to decorate their newest office yeah, and they were looking for like Georgia wildflowers or something. So he had his 
pictures on Flickr, but they were also well tagged. Yes, you know, you that's very right. important. Yeah. So when they were looking for yeah. for flowers that were specific to Georgia, yes, he was the one who yeah. kept coming up, yeah. and that turned into this big, big job for him because it's a very large. Absolutely, company. yeah. People so. look there all the time. You know, you have so many inquiries. Yeah. If you have I don't even have a Flickr account either, I have to <laughs> it's admit. It's easy to do. It's easy. It's just, the, like you said, the tagging that takes time. Now, how you long know? do you think it takes to set up a Flickr account, and how many pictures should you start with? I think it takes probably just a couple of minutes to set up the account. And um, uploading is also not, not difficult on Flickr. It's pretty easy and quick. And you should probably start out with like 10 to 20 pictures. That's it? That's all That's you it. think you That's where you're going to start out. Just and make then, sure they're well tagged. Yeah, and what's really, really important is to link to groups. Flickr has so many groups, and you can link your picture to a group. Let's say you're a landscape photographer, and you specialize in sunsets. So there's Florida sunsets, sunsets of the West Coast, sunsets of the East Coast. So click on to those groups and publish your pictures in those groups because people see it so now because i don't know Flickr, i'm going to ask some stupid questions yeah so you publish it first in your own site yes in Flickr or in Flickr, whatever yeah and then you share it in these groups yes you share it in these groups you okay. tag it first and i'm a little bit guilty of not tagging it enough sometimes yeah. i get lazy and i just write bird Offspring. <laughs> yeah. Bird. <laughs> when, yeah, if you don't I have a lot of time. Exactly what you were, if you look if you watch my Instagram, which is yeah. fairly new, it's Instagram slash understand photography. I've only had it for a couple months. And I have these long, you know, quotes and then I'll have one with nothing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I know it happens. It, it, it does. So. But you can always go back and add it later yeah. Yeah. and add more to it. Okay, so the hardest thing is choosing the pictures. Should yes. you should you choose them? as the same way you choose your pictures for a website like for and this is my advice to people who are starting their own websites you need to have a look yeah so and what most photographers are guilty of including me is oh i love black and white photography oh i love bright color photography i want to be a landscape photographer but look at this macro picture but now i'm into portraits today so yes. i mean i got like everything i'm all over the place so my advice always is when you're putting up your website you know, put it, things into collections. Absolutely, or categories. So yeah. if, let's say you're just going to start with 10 in Flickr, should you just put in your Georgia wildflowers? Or yeah, I should, think you should you put a little variety? I think you should specialize and, and only submit your best shots. Don't submit everything that you have. Just really pick and choose and, and think about would people buy this? I mean, if, if you But they can't buy it on Flickr, right? No, but if your aim is to sell it, would people then um, buy this? Okay. You know, that's, that's important. Because you're trying to get recognized as an artist. Yes. So you want pictures on there that would be Absolutely. Sell saleable and pictures. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I get it. All right. All right. And I didn't know about the groups, so that was really, really yeah, helpful. Yeah, groups are very important. Maybe that was, should be a whole thing. On, we should have a whole show on Flickr maybe sometime. Yes, that would be good. Because, because now, because like I don't have a Flickr at all, but I have Instagram. Personal, yeah. Instagram business, Facebook personal, Facebook business, Facebook business, Facebook group, Twitter, y YouTube. Ah! Yeah, that's <laughs> plenty, I know. So what, what would you think would be the next most important social media aspect for photographers? Mm, I think the most important ones... Photographers who want to sell their art. Okay, want to sell their art. Facebook is important. Post on Facebook regularly. Don't post too much at once. I think it's very important to not post... 50 pictures at once because most people don't have the time to go through all those pictures at the same time. So post one or two that are really good and post. I believe that Facebook started scheduling too. I'm not sure, but I think that I saw something that you can now schedule your posts in okay, Facebook. Okay, that would be perfect. Not yeah. positive because yeah. I was doing it through an, an, a separate app, yeah. but I think Facebook's doing it now. I mean, try not to spam it. Just try to, you know, put couple posts a day or one or you know not too much and not too many pictures at once and really pick the pictures that you want to share now do with you others. say to put that on a personal page or a business page i would say put it on your personal page it depends what what kind of business you have i think a personal page is maybe better because then it doesn't come across as an ad well plus the on the, on the business pages they won't facebook doesn't even show anybody yeah. If you like my Understand Photography Facebook page, 
they show, I think they said 2% of my posts. Okay. Or no, yeah. my posts to 2% of the people. Yeah. That's so. I know. That's but in my personal posts, yeah. they showed to much, not to all of them, but to no, many No, and you can more. link it, you can share your, your images with other groups on Facebook. Yeah. So should you post it first on your? Yeah, post it first on yours and then share it into somebody yeah, else, into, into somebody a group. Else's. Yeah, into other. As long as it's appropriate, read the rules of the group, please. Yes, definitely, <laughs> and see if they would like that or yeah, encourage that. Yeah, but there yeah. are many groups that. But yeah, there's like Florida landscapes, Absolutely. and I can't think Wildlife of all the different ones. Wildlife photography, best photographers is a really good one. Best photographers, yeah, that's, that's a, a Facebook great group. group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a really good one and. So you just have to, you know, belong to different groups, apply for different groups to, to be accepted, and then post your picture on your page and then on other people's pages. All right, so let's say I have this beautiful picture. I'm going to put it in my Flickr account first, and then I'm going to upload it to Facebook, then I'm going to upload it to Instagram, yep. then I'm going to put it in, is Twitter even worth it? I think, Probably. well, Twitter... It, it's, it creates interest. Like if you have a specialty tweet and say, well, look at my blah, 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 new picture that I took of so and such and link it to something else, people will, will do that. But now, I'm not a big Twitter fan. I, I do something that my son told me was tacky. But I have my Facebook set up to automatically post to Twitter. So whatever I put yeah, on Facebook okay. goes on Twitter too. Yeah. That's the my same with said, Instagram. Oh, people hate, hate that, but I have a completely different, a completely different audience. Well, see, then it works. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't even know if I have any of the same people in my Twitter yeah. as because you know, my clientele is slightly older. They don't use Twitter. Right. Yeah. So yeah. the people who follow me on Twitter are, just aren't the same people. No, not the same so. thing. Yeah. 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 It's the same with Instagram. You can post something on Instagram, and then you can share it on Facebook and other sites. And that there's a plus and a minus. Like it depends on the audience. Yeah. Sometimes okay. it's annoying. You see the same picture over and over and over. But, yeah. Because uh, there's some know. people I follow. They, they yeah. Some, and they I do, do that, that too. So I'm guilty. <laughs> <But> <laughs> you know, it's just easy at, at times. All right. So you're you're blasting your pictures all over the place. How, how does that really help you, though, in the long run? I mean, how does that really, you know, does an art gallery? Gonna look on Facebook for your pictures? I don't think so. How no, is that, how is that gonna help you? An art gallery, maybe not. But for example, if you post your pictures on your shot, which is a National Geographic site, um, people will find you. Is that yourshot.com or is that a Facebook it's, group or yeah, what is no, it? No, no, no. It's its own website. It's called Your Shot. It's part of National Geographic, and you can create an account and you can post up to I think 15 images per week on there. Okay. And they have. They have tons of competitions, and it's really high-end photography for the most part. Um, there's some excellent pictures there, so it gives you um, interesting an interesting variety of what you can do with your pictures. And you can submit in those competitions as well. What do you mean an interesting variety? In because there are so many different photographers out there. On, on that site, and it's an inspiration to go on there. Uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, the quality of So what of happens? Images. Do you post them there and then? You post them there, and sometimes editors will see it. A good friend of mine, he posted his picture um, of a Florida bird, and uh, he was published in the National Geographic Guide for Florida. Wow, yeah. Yeah. And just they found from him that on there. Yeah, yeah. So that's what they're doing. They're scouting there. They're scouting there, absolutely. Yeah. And then you can they're say, looking. hey, I've been published in the... Yes. In, in, yeah. in the, uh, I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> National Geographic. Well, I was yeah, trying to who mix it all want together. That, right? Yeah, everybody <laughs> so. would like that. But it's, it, that's a way of, of being found. I mean, if your pictures are just at home on your hard drive or... I mean, who sees them? But no, how much time does this take? It takes time. You know, it's a considerable amount of time. So what do you do? What do you do? Do you like get I up pick every and morning choose. or? I, yeah, I spend like an hour a day probably posting things on different sites. I could spend more. You know, the more time you spend, the more rewarding it is. Um, if you're retired and you have more time, why not do it? Why not do it an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening? How do you discipline yourself to do that? <laughs> you just have to constantly do it. Plus, you learn so much. You see other people's pictures on there, and it, um, you know, it excites you to go out and shoot, and you know, think outside the box. Okay. Yeah, I just went today. For example, I went on a site called um, 
two bright lights. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with yeah. that because they started. That's I don't know. fabulous. Well, you know, I, I haven't been on there in a while because that was all wedding yeah. photography when I, I actually belonged to them for yeah. when I was heavy into the weddings. But that's been many, 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 yeah, many, many they, years. They're, they're very interesting. Are they, but they've branched out beyond wedding photography They branched photography out, now. yeah. Absolutely. That's interesting. And then there's another one called Exposure, which is a nice one. I don't know that one. Then there's a third one called 1X. Okay. And they have a free membership and then they have paid memberships and so you have to see what okay, works for you. Okay, what does that you. do though? A free membership and some of This is one, them, like the number one and an X after yeah, it? Yes, one dot X. com, is that what the? Um, I think so, Okay, yeah. anyway, go one ahead. X. And, and what um, do they do? They have three different tiers or four different tiers of membership. So it depends on how much you can upload. Um, a free membership, I think you cannot upload pictures, but a paid membership, which is not terribly expensive, they have different categories um, then you can upload pictures and you will be seen there and they have a wide variety Being seen by who by all sorts of people because they publish on your behalf so they work like two bright lights does yes they because do. because what two yeah. bright lights does that's the only I don't know any of those that you talked about except yeah. two bright lights and I have not done two bright lights in probably at least 10 years but um, they you would submit your picture you would upload let's say you did a wedding okay yeah. so um, You'd, you'd submit your pictures, you know, you'd upload them to Two Bright Lights, and you would submit, I think, like 30 or 40 pictures, a lot of pictures from the wedding. And then you'd say, I'd like to be published in The Knot, in Style Me Pretty, and you'd make a list of the magazines that you'd like to be published, you know, first, and then uh, I think you made a second list on the okay. magazines you'd like to, and they would submit them for you and you had a pretty good chance of getting in at that time now this is a long time ago yeah. so I don't know what the story but is that the same thing 1x does yeah it's, they it's actually like submit your pictures they don't it's not like people just go looking for your pictures they actually take your pictures and they submit it to nature photography magazine Some, or whatever. sometimes it works that way yeah they submit it <clears throat> once you're on there they have a good publishing um, venue that they branch out where you can through this venue it goes to others and then people will pick and choose and people that are looking for let's say stock photography they will find you that way okay I'll have to look in that so it's, so it's that an was interesting one, was one X one? is very interesting it's very artistic what was the other um, one? the other that? one is exposure exposure yeah. and, that, and that's similar to it's the similar. Same all thing? those are kind of similar there's 500 pixels oh yeah you know that 500 one yeah. that's right yeah that's that, another that that's one another is one that they don't submit though that's more of a just a, like a gallery of yeah but they gallery, have competitions right? and um, that's more like Flickr, isn't it kind of like that yeah okay yeah, yeah. so but people look there you know Editors look through those sites and people publish. I, I was found um, th from, um, there was somebody from the BBC um, online gallery for nature and they found my picture on Flickr. Okay. Now, so. let me, I, and maybe this is too personal, but uh, when somebody like from Germany asks you to use your swamp buggy, how do you charge them? How much do you charge them? How do you know what to charge well, them? Well, what, what happens is if they want your picture, you ask them questions, you know, is it going to be for print? Is it going to be online? Um, and then you research and see what kind of publication is this? You know, is it a small one? Is it a big one? And you ask for compensation. Say, how much will you, you know, are you thinking about? And then see if that works for you or not. And just you, negotiate. Do you have a contract that you send them? Because you don't give them your picture, right? No, you, you don't you, give them You give picture. them the rights to use your picture that Absolutely. one time, yeah. right? Yes. So you lease your picture to them. Yes, you do. And so. uh, you either, either use their contract or you have your own contract or you negotiate. Do you suggest having your own contract ready? I think it's a good idea to do that. Absolutely. And letting people know what they can do with your pictures and what they and cannot do. And maybe people do. should talk about like how much should I charge to lease my picture before it actually happens so that Absolutely. you don't. Because one of the things, you know, I'm putting together a class that should be ready by uh, mid to end of October about selling your photography as art. But the main thing is it's going to be about being sales ready. Yeah. So if somebody comes to you and says, hey, I want to buy your picture, if you say, okay, well, later, I'll get back to you the next week after I have time to figure out how much I want to charge. You know what I mean? They're going to no. just move on. No, you have to know. You have to know. So the same thing, it sounds to me like you should have that kind of ready before you start making this big social media You're campaign, You're going to have right? to have an idea, yeah. Okay. You know, what you want to sell your pictures. Okay. What it's worth it to you and, and what kind of picture you want to sell for what price. Yeah. 
because leasing it yourself, you know, we had a lady on who talked about stock photography. It was so interesting because I, I didn't, I never knew anything about stock photography because since I've been in the business, everybody's like, oh, there's no money in it. There's no money in it. And there's really not that much money in it. You know, it's kind of a high volume, little yeah. tiny 10 cents, five cents each picture. But if you lease your own, you can lease them for $50 or $100 sure. or $300 yeah, or whatever. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's definitely so, a possibility. You just definitely. have to know. You have to do some research and um, decide what you want to do. The same if you put it on, let's say, Fine Art America and sell it. You can go with their suggested rates or you can create your own rates. So you have to see what are other people doing. You know, how do I fit in there? Am I overpriced? Am I underpriced? You know, what is it worth it to me? You know, so now that's tell me that's about really Fine Art America because I I already know a lot, but I want to talk yeah. about it so everybody else knows a lot about Fine Art America. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the, what are the pros and cons of Fine Art America? Um, I think it's an easy site to navigate. It's an easy site to upload your pictures. Um, First of all, what do they do? What they do is the you place your pictures on the site and they sell it for you. It's a sales site per se. Um, you can say what the price should be or you can use their suggestion. And you upload the pictures. What I don't like oftentimes is um, that they just automatically take your picture and turn it into like a cell phone cover or into oh. a bedspread <laughs> or into a tote bag. I mean, that could be a plus and minus. Some pictures, maybe you want to do that and others not. So, but you have control. You can choose that, but it's a lot of work to do that. Mm -hmm. That's And what, what kind of commission do they take? I don't remember. I have had it so long, I don't remember what it but was. They, but they, they, is there a cost up front with them to upload your pictures? I think there is a, there is an, introductory um, site that you can use. But it's pretty Yeah, you can I only can't use... remember. It's, it's pretty low. It's low. It, there's a free one and then there's another one, but it's it's not very expensive to join. But they... So they do the printing for you and, and yes. shipping and everything. Everything, which is easy. <laughs> which makes it easier. So it makes it very easy. But you still have to be the one to drive the people there. Absolutely. You have to people upload the pictures. People just don't go through Fine no. Art America no. looking for pictures. So no. Maybe some people do, but not that many, I don't think. They have a, you, it, you know, the Fine Art America account comes with a website, which is nice. It comes with uh, an integration for your own website, mm -hmm. um, which is easy to use. Um, what else? What pluses? They do do a lot of advertising on your behalf. Now, do you feel like the printing is up to your standards? Yes. Too? Yeah. Yeah. And how do you see it if it's shipped off to a customer? <laughs> I, I ordered it for myself just to see how Did it you? is, and it was it was really good. Okay. It was, and, and yeah, the quality was fine. But they're and by far, the, I, I'm, am I right? They seem to be the biggest. Yeah, they seem to be the biggest and the easiest to use. Um, it's just when you upload pictures, you have to give a description. You don't have to, but you should give a description, and that's a little bit time intensive. Um, but the same thing is with the groups. Um, Fine Art America has many groups. They have many competitions within Fine Art America. Oh, see, I didn't so, know that. So, yeah, it pays to go through it and see where do, where do my images fit in, um, submit it to the different groups, um, submit it to the different competitions. I mean, this could be a full-time job if you really work it. Yeah. The more time you put in, the more you get out of it. Of course, like yeah. anything, right? Yeah, like anything. Yeah, that's, that's the what problem. It is. You have to work it and you have to be disciplined. You have to take the time to do this. I have a, a, a talk that I do at conventions and th camera clubs called How to Sell Your Photography as Art. And uh, it was about a year ago. It was here at the Florida convention. And uh, at the end of my talk, this guy goes, what can I do that's easier than what you said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's not easy way. <laughs> it's like, I was like, wow, that was a weird question. It kind of threw well, me know, off guard. It's a good one. Too. It's, a good one, it's like yeah. easy there. No, They're just as hire easy. someone that has all the <laughs> marketing for you. Yeah, you know? but it seems you know, it seems like nobody cares as much as you do. You That's still right. have to keep yeah. your finger on everything. Yeah, you, you do. know. You so, do. so if you if I was just gonna okay, so. Of course, your own website too. We didn't talk yes. about that, but that's really important that you have a well, you know, like mine was so bad. I was so upset, and it's finally up and working. It has to work. Yes. And it has to be 
if you want to charge high prices for your photography, your website will better look expensive. Am I right? Yes, yeah. yeah. So, you have to get a professional like, they're website. so nice, like, Smug Mug is fine. Yeah. But you're not, if you're using a Smug Mug with just the little thumbnails, that's not. You know, no, you'd, smart you'd, you'd rather it'd be better, I think, just to have the fine art America because it looks more professional, in my opinion. Yeah, I think, I mean, in Smugmark, it's a little bit harder to navigate, I think. I think and so. You need to and know it, they all look the same. It. I don't think, I don't know if they can't customize, but you everybody... You can customize, but it's hard to do. It's not oh, so easy okay. to do. It's, but it's so a little many bit more photographers I know use it. Well, it's a great, it's a good site. But it, it doesn't, is. it doesn't make me feel, it makes me feel like they're not... They didn't want to spend the money to get a real website or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's my feeling. Maybe, and I don't know if maybe an art patron would feel that same way, but I feel like they would. I, I feel like an art patron, they're going to see your work at that coffee shop or in Flickr or on anywhere, and yes. then they're going to go to your website. Yes. They're yeah. always going to go to your website. When we found you, we went to your website to see yeah. your work before we thought about, you know, having you on the yes. show. Everybody goes to the website, so the website is really, really important. It is really important. For example, if you want to work for a magazine, they ask you, do you have your own website and what is it? And then they will check you out and see, is, you know, is this the kind of person that we will hire? Yeah. You know, so if you would like to shoot, let's say, events, you better have some event photography on your website and not just uh, wildlife, for right. say. You know, if that's important to you or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's important to have a good website and that showcases what you like to do. And they, and I don't know any off the top of my head, but there are many artist websites that are fabulous. Yeah. And you can just look, em, look up, you know, just do a search under artist websites. If you want a WordPress website, you can oh, just yeah. do a WordPress theme, artist websites or th yeah. something like that. And and they have the templates and they're beautiful yeah, it's and you easy can to have do. a very high end looking website yeah. for not a lot of money that's true yeah you nowadays it's very to, easy it's it, just there's drop just in so many artists in the world cuz we're not yeah. just talking you know a, a, a an oil or watercolor um, painter is going to pretty much have the same type of website as a photographer if yeah. you, we're all artists yeah, we're all true. selling two dimensional yeah. pictures yeah, yeah. So, so you have to have something that showcases that yeah yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so what if you if you were going to say, like, what would be, I have only three hours a week. Mm -hmm. All right. What am I going to do if I want, and I have nothing yet. Well, I'm going to get my website first. Okay, but okay. let's say that's the first step. So what would be my next three steps? What would be the most important place to put on like, what's the most important social media? What's the most, mm -hmm. should I get that job first at the freelancing or should I be posting on social media? I think you should do a variety of things. I mean, you should research what is locally available. Um, are there magazines that are looking for pictures? How can I connect to a magazine? Just send the editor a note and say, hey, I'm a photographer. I take pictures of uh, sunsets and I have a beautiful gallery. Take a look at take a look at this. Here's my website. Please take a look. Let me know if you can publish some of my work. Can I work for you? You know, what is available? That's one thing. And that doesn't take long. That takes five minutes, ten minutes to research that and to send that email. Okay. Another thing is to have a Facebook account and uh, publish a couple pictures on Facebook. Okay. Link it to other groups. Find other groups. All, right. it, all this doesn't really take that long. That takes a while, though. Yeah, well, The I problem mean, with Facebook <laughs> is you can't just go on there and post your picture and then share it into the groups because you're going to get sucked in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right, and then you're going to be going, oh, Yeah, you, you know. have to be disciplined. <laughs> like, don't look at anything else. Just do your own self-promotion, you know? Uh, okay, but, but that would... If you're going to post every day, that's still going to take... Yeah, if 15 post, minutes per picture a day yeah. on average, right? Yeah, that's true. But you can do it at night, you know, if you have some time and uh, just do that. I mean, I don't have television, so that's my evening entertainment. Do you really? <laughs> you don't, have, <laughs> a you don't have a television at no, all? No, no, I don't. <laughs> so I just, you know, wow. get everything online pretty much. See, for me, I have, um, my son told me about it. It's, it's freedom.to, I think. And it's a, you can block different websites. Okay. So I block Facebook in the morning. Oh, that's a good idea. So I can't even get on yep. if I wanted to. And I also block my email, but I do look at my email on the phone just to make sure there's nothing yeah, real important. But I'm not addicted to my phone. I'm addicted no. to my 
real computer. Yeah. So I have well, all these different, and I forget it was only like twenty-five dollars a year or something for that to freedom do that. Of that tool. <laughs> Control. And it's so nice because I can, you know, like on Fridays I can say, oh well, I really need to get on Facebook on yeah. Friday afternoons because I, I think I only have like from twelve thirty to one thirty I can go on Facebook a day, and that's okay. it. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Until mm -hmm. like five o'clock or that's something. That's interesting. Yeah. It's, yours is even better. Don't even have a TV. <laughs> yes, you don't have TV, so you have plenty of time <laughs> in the evenings. But even you if know. you do watch TV, you could do it on a laptop or, oh, yeah, or a tablet while you're watching TV. Yeah, yeah. Just can, do it like, let's say, 30 it. minutes a day, you know, either in the morning or evening or in the lunch break or whenever The hardest part is probably just choosing the pictures, right? I mean... Yeah, that's that's the difficult part. But because then you're talking about, well, it's only an hour a day, but that's on top of taking the pictures, yeah, processing editing. the pictures, yeah. choosing the pictures, yeah. organizing them so that you know which ones you want to post. Yeah, and well, then you, you got to do post it all at once. And yeah, for example, when I go out and shoot wildlife, I usually take between per shoot between let's say 200 and 400 pictures. You know, and I'm out all morning long, mm -hmm. and then I come home, and then I go through it, and I decide which ones do I want to keep and I may add it like let's say 10 at a time. Uh -huh. So I have 10 pictures ready to go for the next 10 days to post on different sites. It doesn't have to be now for now, you know, because it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's good. So do it all at once when you have the time, make a collection and, and make a folder on your computer, Facebook po uh, pictures to be shared, Instagram pictures, um, Flickr pictures and have different ones and then you can post it to different sites. You could do it like this, you know, edit like during the week and then on the weekend just post. How do you keep track of all that though? You I have mean, to have a system in place. What kind of system could you put in? Because I know, you know, I started this Instagram account, this the business Instagram this summer and I made a folder. I mean, I personally didn't start it. I had an intern who, who did it for me. And oh, that's nice. so, well, <laughs> You know, all it takes is money. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, you're so lucky. Yeah. No, I have no. to pay her. Yes, right. <laughs> they don't come for free. No. <laughs> anyway, um, so I made a folder of, I don't know, 50 pictures, let's say, and she whipped through those. And I said, you can't post twice a day because I, I can't, I just don't, I don't have, an, I can't keep up with that. So she said, okay, I'll do once a day. So I made another folder and put some more pictures in there. And then made a third folder and put some more. So every time I do it, I make a whole new folder. But she still mixed it up and got, you know, there's like double, triple of the same pictures in there. Yeah, you so have to have a like good file you, system in you, place. What system do you have? I just have track? a really super simple system. How do you know that you already posted something? Because everything is, uh, has a date attached to it. Uh huh. You know, so you know when the picture was taken, when you posted it. And uh, you, you know when it was taken, but you don't know when you posted yeah, it. Yeah, but you can look, you know, you can go on your Facebook account and see, hey, what have I posted? What have I not posted? But how long would that take? It doesn't take long. It's, uh, you, because you have your whole picture gallery and you can see through it quickly. But don't you have, I mean, in my picture gallery, I bet I have 10,000 pictures in my Facebook. Yes, I do too. I have a lot of them. But because all my personal stuff's in there too, you yeah, know? Yeah, but you, when you take the pictures, let's say you take it on a Monday or a Tuesday, and then you post on a Wednesday. So you, know? you never post old pictures? I do. I do. But um, it just depends. Sometimes I take old pictures and I rework them. I give it like an artistic spin because I just feel like doing that. It's a yeah. fun thing to do. Uh -huh. It's like entertainment for me. And so I. I Sometimes I post older pictures, sometimes I post newer pictures. It depends when I get the time also. Like when I'm on vacation, let's say, I don't post much at all because I don't have the time. When I'm somewhere else, I want to explore this place yeah. and not be on Facebook. So it takes me time to get back home and then work on the pictures and then post it. And people always think, oh, are you in Germany right now? No, I was there like two weeks yeah. ago, but I didn't have the time to. Well, that's what I'm, I'm looking at. My like friend Chris just got b back from Vietnam about a week ago yeah. and he's just started yes. posting the pictures. Yeah. And everybody's like, are you still there? Yes, I He's know. like, no, but he could end in every yeah. post, you know. It's funny sometimes. And <laughs> people see you around town and like, liar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but. Yeah, that's how it is. It's okay. It's all fun too, you know. It's and should be enjoyable. I I have to be so strategic with mine because I don't think to post things. Like it never, you know how people, oh, here's a picture of what I'm eating. Here's a picture of me here. Yeah. Here's, I just it never occurs to me to do that. 
So for me, the Instagram is working out better because I sit down for a couple hours, I collect all these pictures and put them in a folder, and then we schedule them. We use something called Later, okay. which helps schedule the pictures. And you can also save hashtags in there, which is right. kind of nice because that's another thing. You know, when, when Ashley was setting the Instagram up and putting the Instagrams on, and she said, no more than 30 hashtags. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to post this picture. And I go, hashtag photography. And I'm like, oh, crap, I can't think of anything else to say. <laughs> I know sometimes. <laughs> so she, yeah. put a, she made these little collections oh, of, like, idea. for travel, yeah. for nature, for wildlife, for birds, just to make it easier on me Absolutely. because I can't think of hashtags. Yeah. You know, my mind doesn't think in hashtags. Yeah, yeah plus it's a time saver. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I mean, I usually have to cut some of them out because yeah. I, don't, I want them to be fit. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, right. But it does, it really helps. It's, yeah. And I forget how much it costs, but it was very, very reasonable. It was called Later, and it helps you schedule. Okay, that's it's good. It's really, really yeah. nice good for Instagram. Into. So, all right, so what are our, our last tip, biggest tip for you, last, last hurrah? The last biggest tip, it's hard to say because it's such a variety of it different It sounds to me like the biggest tip is you just to, need to be organized and put the I time think so in. Too. I think that's what you need to do. Yeah, that is the biggest tip. And just get out there, you know, just submit, like I said, to submit to competitions. Don't be afraid. A lot of people are like, I'm not good enough and I'm not there yet. That's, you know, not necessarily true. Just submit. Oh, yeah. You know, and you, you know, see I'm what happens. Don't be discouraged if you don't win. And many times I submitted, I didn't win anything. It's just, a, you know. Yeah. That's just how the way it is. Well, I'm a judge at the Naples okay. Art Association. And, okay. and some of the stuff, you know, I feel bad for this one guy. He just keeps, he's not a photographer, he's somebody else. But he, or she, I don't know. We don't know who they are. But they submit the same pictures over and over and over. <laughs> and, and we just all think they're terrible, right? And uh, the problem is, is they don't rotate the judges as okay. often. So we're seeing the same but sometimes people just don't get in because we have too many photographers. Okay. Yeah. They're good enough. Yeah. It's just that we cannot let any more photographers into this fair. Yeah. Or any more jewel jewelers and photographers are mostly who's uh, yeah. entering these these uh, these art fairs. So sometimes you are good enough even if you don't yeah. don't get in. Uh, yeah, that's true. So you have to yeah. you have to be able to get that not take it personally. Sorry, I hit yeah, my exactly. mic. Yeah, exactly. Don't yeah, don't take it personally. That doesn't mean that you're a bad photographer because you didn't win, you yeah. know. There's it's really I was a judge once too and it's super hard to judge pictures. You know, you have to take your personal bias and put it somewhere else and see, you know, I mean, I like wildlife mostly. So I'm a fan of wildlife, but I can judge also portraits. You know, you have to just have an open mind and it's difficult. Now, where can everybody find you? What's your website? My website's ClaudiaDanielsPhotography.com, so really simple. And ClaudiaDanielsPhotography.com. Um, Daniels yep. And I have uh, pictures there. They're categorized wildlife, travel, landscape, flowers. That's basically it. Those are my favorite things. That sounds like pretty nice things to, yeah. be, <laughs> to have on your... That's what we like to put on our walls, yeah, right? That's you what, know? Yeah, that's what I like to shoot, so... That's awesome. That's well, thank you for coming well, down thank and being you on the show. Me. I great. really appreciate it. Oh, thanks. And uh, thank you to the audience for watching. I'm Peggy Farron. Um, remember, online classes are on sale through August 31st, uh, September 1st. They're all going back to regular price. And you get to keep them for life. And also, don't forget to check out our trips because we got a lot, a lot of cool stuff coming up this, this season, you know, 2018, 2019 season. So you are watching the Understand Photography Show, episode number 101 with Claudia Daniels. I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you so much for watching. Get up!